it's Darling Craft Lit or Raven here and today I have a needle felting tutorial for you guys. I'm going to be showing you how I made this cute watermelon turtle. I really love this idea and I think it came out super adorable. As you guys know I'm really new to needle felting so feel free to customize this or substitute any techniques you wish. Well let's get started. First you're going to need your felty wool. The amounts of each color will just depend on what size you want to make your turtle and how stiff you like your creation. Then you're going to need your usual needle felting supplies and some polyfill. You can find a complete list of everything I used in the description box below. I also recommend some scissors, shapers, and optional some findings, etc. to add to your turtle. To begin, I took quite a large amount of polyfill and began folding it into itself and poking it until I got my desired stiffness. By doing this, you'll end up using less wool to finish your creation. Remember to rotate your work to make sure that it felts evenly. Please keep in mind that this can take some time and I'm using a three needle tool to speed up this process. You want to end up with a hockey puck shape or deflated ball. This is what mine looks like. Next I decided to add a base of wool to felt everything on so that the polyfill fibers would stay inside later. I just loosely covered the polyfill base in a white wool and poked all the way around until I was happy with how the surface looked. This is what mine ended up at. Now let's create some legs for our turtle. Begin with four even sections of green wool. I'm going to show you how I made one leg but you want to obviously make four. With these sections you want to spread your wool a bit and fold it leaving a tail at one end. Now you want to poke with a single needle constantly flipping your work to create an oval shape. When your wool is about two thirds as much poked as you would like, you want to start shaping it to create a little hump on one end and round a point towards the bottom of the opposite side. It's really hard to explain but hopefully my video footage shows you well enough what I mean. This is what it looks like once you're done and as I said you want to create four of these in total. After you're done you want to spread out the tail ends of your legs. Now you can loosely attach them to your body base just so you get the positions correctly. On the body you want to position these on the bottom end of the outer circle if that makes sense because you want to leave space for the shell on the top. You want all the humps of the legs towards the front of the turtle. Once you're happy with the position you want to go ahead and poke and secure them in place, blending out the ends. I find it helps use my needle on a slight angle through the legs to make sure they're secure. This is what your turtle should look like now. For the tail use about one third of the amount of wool you used for the legs. You want to again spread it out a bit then fold it into itself leaving a tail end. Now you want to poke it into a tall rounded triangle by folding in the ends, poking and rotating your work. Once you're done it should look something like this. To attach the tail you want to repeat the same process that you did earlier and you want to put this between the back two legs. For the head you want to use two to three times the amount of wool that you used for one of the legs. Repeat the same process but this time you want to shape it into an oval slash egg shape. You want your loose wool to be more at the narrow end. Again this is hard to explain but it should end up looking like this. Attach the head similarly to the tail but this time between the front legs. After that this is what the turtle looks like. Now I'm going to be making the rim of the shell with some white wool. I began with a long section of the white wool and I'm slowly twisting slash rolling it into a long log and poking as I do so. Eventually you should have something that looks like this with the wool still a little loose. Now you want to gently poke it into place around the turtle just above and next to the legs, head and tail. Once you're happy with the position go ahead and secure it into place and use your needle to reduce the wool. This is what mine looks like. Now for the watermelon part I added some slightly separated and rolled up red wool into the middle of the turtle shell and poked it into place. I wanted more of a hum so I added some more red wool and repeated the process. To add a little bit of a gradient I wrapped some fuchsia wool just above the white and into the red and poked it into place. I still wasn't happy with the height of it so I actually added some more red and finally poked and reduced the shell. 
Once I was done, it looked something like this. Now if you would like, you can add a finding. I am using some embroidery thread and a split ring. I started by threading from the bottom of the middle of the shell, then I added the split ring, went through it once more, then back into the bottom of the turtle shell. Now I put it through the turtle once more, but stop before completing the loop, cut my string, split it, and put one side through the loop, then pulled the string tight. Add a knot or so and trim the thread. I just poked in a bit more white wool here just to hide the end of the thread, but that is completely optional. For the bottom of the turtle, I went with a darker green, and you just want to spread some of the loose wool on the bottom of the turtle. Poke around reducing the wool and making sure you cover the bottom and sides up to the shell and around the legs. Add more wool as needed. This is what the bottom looks like. Now it's time to add on any details you might like. I added some seeds to the shell by adding some loose black wool wisps into my teardrop mini clay cookie cutter and poked it all the way around. This will help get the general shape, but of course, you can do the same freehand if you prefer. Once it was pretty much in place, I removed the cookie cutter and evened out the wool and cleaned up the edges. I actually had room for six seeds, but you can add more or less if you prefer. If you decide to make them smaller, you could even add on a second row. Then I added some blush and eyes using a piece of a pen using the same technique. This is what that looks like. For the underbelly, I twisted some wool into a long snake, held it in place and gently poked while pulling and overlapping the edges gently. This is the design I created at the bottom of the turtle. Feel free to do whatever you wish. Lastly, I decided to add a few spots to legs, tail, and head in various sizes using either the pen piece or by rolling a few wisps into a loose ball then poking it into place. This is what my turtle looks like. To give your turtle a nice and finished look, make sure you do any additional poking and reduce it and cut away any loose fibers as best you can. Then add on any additional findings and you're done. This is what my watermelon turtle looks like and I think he or she came out super cute. I think this would be fun to hang up almost anywhere or put on a book bag, etc. All my watermelon turtle needs is a fun and clever name. So for two additional entries into my giveaway, make sure you entered on the original video and answered this question. What should my turtle's name be? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching my second needle felting tutorial. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you like, you can follow me on my social media and all my accounts are listed on the screen. Also, please subscribe to my channel for more crafty goodness. I'll see you guys all soon. Bye! Hey there! More information and the link to my giveaway can be found in the description box below. If you missed this, you can check it out by following the link in the description or by clicking the screen.